Okay guys, so here we're going to add the uh, Dragon Totem NPC to Sunstream. Now to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to pull the NPC gen file from the Z1 map. Uh, every map has a folder. Folder is basically defined by a letter and a number. Sunstream is Z1. I'll, I'll post a list that will uh, help people figure out what most of if not all of the important maps are. So what you're going to do is you're going to open up your your NPC gen with the NPC gen editor which is posted in the thread above here. And you go ahead and clone the last ID. Now to do that all you do is you just select it. I could have selected any ID and cloned it the same way just by clicking this copy button. And then I'm going to go and change the ID so that I have the right NPC spawning there, right? And then once that's changed, I'm going to change the index ID. You'll see me click this a lot. This is modify. It's just a habit. It's just saving my work um, as I go along in case for some reason I decide to click here or something. I don't want um, I don't want it to to not to lose my work, even if it is only a few seconds. Um, now this NPC is uh, something that we leave there because I'm adding an NPC but if it was a monster I would change it to monster. I don't know if that says boss or monster or what it says but I know that all the monsters have it. Um, here is where you would change a trigger if there was one. Uh, for example Lord Earth Force if you wanted to make him spawn on all realms you would change the trigger to zero. He would spawn on all realms. I'm sure that affects some other stuff but I haven't seen anything as of yet, and it hasn't negatively affected us in any way or been abusable or anything like that. So I know that just changing to zero does work. Now the next thing I'm going to do is change where the NPC is standing and how high off the the ground he is hovering, so to speak. And uh, that that's something I've already done in a previous NPC gen. So I'm just copying from the old one, and um, th that that's this. We'll decide basically what square on the map he will stand on and how high off the map that that he will be and then here we will determine where the NPC is facing um, I'm not sure which one does what I just copy them based on basically what I'll do is I'll go and I'll find a NPC that is facing the way I want it to face that I want the one I'm adding to face and I will copy the information um, based on that now there's nothing else you need to know to to make an NPC work if you're just adding something like like an exchange or even like a custom NPC where you exchange stuff or anything like that. I haven't really added much else. I've never really found a need to, so I don't know that if this will work for everything exactly the same, but so far it has for me worked exactly like this for everything that I've attempted to put up. Um, with the bosses, when I made the bosses spawn at a certain amount of time apart, all you do is go ahead and change right here to uh, the amount of seconds that you want the boss to be spawning. So if um, if you go and you look at like Lord Earth Force or something, you'll find that there's already a number there, and you just change it to whatever you want it to be in seconds, so that you can go ahead and and uh, control how often that uh, that monster or boss or whatever is going to spawn. Um, and then remember that the, the trigger, if it is already there, if you just change it to zero, that will that will make the boss spawn on all realms. So once you have all of that stuff, you know you know you've got it all down, you've got it all uh, modified correctly. You're going to go ahead and save your work. Make sure that you do that. Very important. Um, it's also important to remember to type in dot data when you're saving an NPC gen or else it'll just save as a file and um, it won't it won't work the same and it won't load up properly and stuff um, you'll also notice that it saves the ID like it, it still looks like it's 49597 it's not it's just like if I if I went and I reopened it right now and then I go to the very bottom again it's now 52747 like it should be 
it's uh, just a temporary glitch with the system that you know with the program that makes it look that way um, so now you should know how to add an NPC or a custom mob or, or a custom NPC or whatever it is that you want to add to a map um, there will be a, another tutorial that will tell you how to create those NPCs and how to create shops for them and you know we'll, we'll explain some of the different things that will uh, will cause things to not start up, will cause things to bug out um, that, that is exactly why we change the indexing number and we make sure it's not the same as a previous monster or or uh, whatever because it will otherwise um, cause some kind of an error where the server won't start. I'm not really sure why it has uh, big jumps when they do it but I haven't had any problems as long as I've incremented the number once uh, every time. You might even want to do it a, a jump a couple of hundred numbers just so that you could potentially import your work into a future uh, NPC gen and not have to worry about having you know any duplicate IDs of any kind or anything like that. That's pretty. It's a pretty good general rule for elements and tasks and anything to just you know go jump up by 10k IDs right off the bat because it'll save you a ton of work in the long run, trust me. Um, yeah, so hopefully this helps some people learn how to edit NPCs and, and stuff like that, and hopefully I didn't ramble too much for you guys. This is like uh, my fifth time recording this video, so, you know, take it or leave it, this is, this is how it's going to be. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'm going to move on to the next video.